Hi, this is Richard from Stinger Bees, and today I'm going to show you how to calculate the perfect carbon to nitrogen ratio for a compost pile. Okay, so for a successful compost pile, you need four things you need carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and water. Now, the carbon and nitrogen need to be in a specific ratio for your pile to fire up. So to have a proper ratio you need approximately 30 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. This is your carbon to nitrogen ratio. Now, this is your optimal ratio. Now this will work from about 20 to 1 to 40 to 1. This is carbon to nitrogen, carbon to nitrogen. So if you're over here on this side, if you're leaning this way, this means you have more nitrogen. And when you have more nitrogen in your pile, it starts to stink. Now over here, this means you have more carbon than uh, nitrogen and when this happens your pile doesn't heat up as much it basically it slows down so we're really aiming for for 30 to 1 now your pile will light up pretty well between 25 to 1 and 35 to 1 but 30 to 1 is where you want to be Okay, so now you need to know what you're going to put in your pile. And there's a list of carbon to nitrogen ratios all over on the internet. I'll link some down below. But I'll list a couple here. One is just regular paper. And we get a, it's about 170 to 1. Wood chips run about 226 to 1. Uh, cow manure is about 20 to 1. Sawdust is about 500 to 600 to 1. And twigs, about 500 to 1. And straw, this is about 100 to 1. Now what I used is manure and straw. So, to calculate the proper ratio, what we're going to use is what I've heard referred to as a Pearson square. So what you'll do is, we'll say I'm, I'm using manure and straw. So we make our square here. And on the inside, we put our optimal carbon to nitrogen ratio, which is 30 to 1. Now manure is 20 to 1 and straw is 100 to 1 so the first thing you have to do is subtract these two so we get 20 minus 100 is negative 80 now if you get a negative number just make it positive and this number is important this 80 so over here, th this is your manure side. This is going to tell you how much manure, and this is going to tell you how much straw we need in our final mixture. So what you do is you go this way. Okay, so to calculate your manure, you get 20 minus 30 is negative 10. Just make that positive. And then straw we go this way, 100 minus 30 is 70, 
So, now we have all the numbers we need. This is a number we need, this is a number we need, and this is a number we need. So, your ratio is going to look like this. 70 over 80 for manure, and 10 over 80 for straw. So, this is about, this is exactly 0.875, and this is 0.125. So, this is 87.5% of your mixture is going to be manure and 12.5% of your mixture is going to be straw. That will give you really close to 30 to 1 ratio that you need to make your pile fire up hot. So, to mix this, I, I do this by volume. I, I thought about it and thought about it and weight just... it doesn't work. You get way crazy results with weight. I mean you you can swing anywhere on, anywhere on this. I mean you can get to where your pile just won't fire up or it'll just stink. So do this by volume. It's always worked well for me. So one strategy I have for mixing the pile in these ratios is if you have a five gallon bucket so say this is your five gallon bucket and this is zero gallons and this is five gallons four gallons three gallons two gallons one gallon what you can do is multiply everything by 20 so here this would this will be a hundred this will be 80 for four gallons 60 40 20 and 0. So 80%, 87% of this, where is this going to fall? So you can, you can cut this in half. Four and a half gallons is about 90%. Right? And then down here you say, well, 12, if you cut that in half, that's about 10. So uh, this doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, I like to get things real close, but I mean, you're not going to swing out of this this Goldilocks zone, if you will. So, so let's just say you you throw in 10% straw, which would be about a half a gallon. You, you fill the rest up with with manure. You've got it beat. Or I, if you want to look at it the other way. Four and a half gallons would be about 90%. You fill it up with manure to here and the rest straw, you've got it beat. So there's there's a lot of strategies you can use to get this, to get your percentages where you need them. I, I prefer to use a metric system just because it's so much easier to nail these decimals than it is with these imperial units, but... And one thing I'll add is that you need a certain size of a pile to actually get it to compost. So a tiny little pile probably won't fire up no matter how perfect your ratio is. And the rule of thumb is basically 3 feet by 3 feet by 3 feet or 1 cubic yard is the minimum for you to get a, a pile that will start to compost with and that's approximately a cubic meter I mean <laughs> however you want to look at it but the bigger the better I always heard five by five by five so, then that's in feet so that's that's quite a mass now if you have an enclosure like a compost bin that you could stick a cubic yard in of material in, uh, that works pretty well. It just it helps to keep the pile from drying out. And remember you need the proper carbon nitrogen ratio, oxygen and water, and not a soaking wet pile. Uh, 
basically you, you wet it down and you get a handful of your compost and you squeeze it and if you get a couple drops of water out you're golden so let's go see my compost pile okay so this is my compost pile it's maybe 12 foot long by about 6 foot wide at the base it shrunk it looks like a about a foot and a half since I've last been here but today I'm going to flip it I don't have my tripod with me so it's probably just going to be a before and after the insides still nice and warm it's about 110 degrees which means it's time to flip it and the stuff on this end is probably three weeks older than the stuff over here so, either way, this side is still pretty hot. I've got this rod stuck in here, and it's, I don't know, probably about 130, 140 degrees, but I'm going to flip the whole pile anyway. All right, so I'm about 15% done. And I don't know if you can see that, but the pile's steaming. It's, I don't know, maybe 6.30 in the morning and about 82 degrees. So, I have a little ways to go. Alright, so basically all I did was I pulled the top and sides off to one side of the pile and then I worked basically just flipping the pile on top of itself so this right side over here is basically the middle of the inside and it all just flipped over so we'll see how it goes it should go well this is a really big pile and it it heats up really well I mean I thought it would dry out a lot more than it has since we've had probably 100, 500, 6 degree days but it only dried out about 4 inches in which shocked me I mean it was nice and moist on the inside so basically all I did was wet the outside and uh, guess I could get it, let it go another week and we'll see but this pile's really going well. Uh, the bigger the pile you have, the better it goes. And if you have an enclosure, it helps retain the moisture. But honestly, this pile did really well in some pretty dry, hot weather. Okay, one thing that I just have to throw in here is that this right here is hemp. The neighbor across the street grew this two years ago, and it's been a menace ever since. So in the fall it dries out and then it blows around like tumbleweeds, and I've had it inside this pile for, I don't know, this side's been going for almost a month now. And this is what it looks like coming out, I mean it looks better coming out than when it went in. I mean, these are small branches. I don't know what that was. This kochia, maybe? I threw all my weeds in here, and I mean, all this stuff's breaking down in this hemp. I mean, you could probably go knock someone over the head with it and knock them out. I mean, tree branches are actually really decomposing, but this stuff craziest plant I've ever come across. I mean, it is something else. Other than burning it, I don't, I don't know what to say. It's an amazing plant. Really, really strong. And it's hard to kill, too. Uh, I guess the neighbor was spraying it with Roundup. He said it's Roundup resistant. And and it's hemp, it's approved by the Department of Agriculture. I mean, they had 30 acres across the street for biofuels. And it blew all over the place, and now it's growing everywhere. So, 
just one of those odd things. I don't know how I'm going to get rid of it. I guess I'll sift it all out and we'll see in the end. I, mean, I don't know what that is. I think that's another chunk of hemp. Hard as a rock. I mean, it's a little, it's a little squishy, but it's not, not breaking down. Everything else in this side, you can see all the weeds and all the twigs and all the branches. Excuse me. Crazy, crazy, crazy plant. 